Good morning, afternoon and evening everyone. Welcome to the Game Week 29 pod of the FPL Wire. I'm your host Zofa and I'm joined by my co-host Late Riser. How's it going buddy? Doing good man. Uh, IPL's coming in a week's time. We've both been uh, busy playing a little uh, draft and uh, have a nice little auction on Sunday which I'm looking forward to. You know something I play with friends, we meet on a Sunday at about 6.30, 7 in the evening. We give each other like a kitty of 10,000 points. And you're supposed to build a ta- team of 11 to 15 players and we and the auction goes on for six to seven hours. It's brilliant. Brilliant. Really looking forward to it. How Sounds about you? Like, How's things been? Things are looking good. Things have been good. Looking sort of forward to the international break. It feels like it's been a lot of football recently. A lot of thinking. A lot of thinking of things like, you know, not just like, you know, players on the pitch, fixtures, etc., etc. Good to switch off, get into IPL. Then we come back on the other side. It's a final stretch. Looking forward to it. Thoughts on the big game at the weekend, Liverpool City? Oh, that was an incredible game. And I watched it with a few friends who don't really watch football. You know, the kind who just watch the odd World Cup matches. And they're just amazed yeah. by the intensity and the quality of it. They're like, bro, in the World Cup final, we don't see players working this hard. Every single pass, every single ball is just like so feisty, so into it. Brilliant game. Very, very high quality yeah. football. Yeah, as, as a neutral, I'm just looking forward to the title race in the next eight or nine odd weeks. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's so engaging. Can't wait for the Arsenal City game as well. You know, That's a see big what one. Happens. That's yeah. a big one. Which horse are you backing? 
ha huh. so from a point of view of banter because most of my friends are uh, uh, liverpool fans you don't want them winning uh, anybody but uh, liverpool i wouldn't mind arsenal winning the title i I'm really actually, wouldn't mind yeah, if you had to ask me more than i think i want arsenal to win the title honestly it's just nice to yeah. see like you know young group of players young coach and it's been a long time arsenal fans have gone yeah. through the ringer so it'd be nice to see them yeah. come out on top yeah that's it i still feel like city haven't found their third fourth and fifth gear like uh, so you know if they do find it they'll take it home i reckon because it's the experience that counts being involved in a title race been there done that for four of the last five seasons but anything's possible now i They're mean the best run in club. after the arsenal game the fixtures are quite easy so arsenal have to take some points off them yeah and uh, club man what a magician like with a pretty uh, four or five first team players missing that second half performance against city was something else. endo man i'm Absolutely. so impressed by endo i really wonder what, what? kaiseido would have been like under klopp's coaching like you see cuz nobody really rated endo endo was no on nobody's radar after and he was so good that game so impressed yeah, even konsa gomez they were just fighting bradley their players you could yeah. see are playing above their ability and that's what real yeah, good man. coaching yeah. does right exactly exactly oh uh, yeah and and now they will have darwin mo it looks like darwin mo trent and alisson all four should be darwin's back already but mo should be fully fit and trent and alisson should be back by the time game week 30 comes so liverpool will have those big dogs ready and i do feel like that there might be a little bit of an advantage where they're focusing on europa as the european focus whereas city and arsenal you don't not play your first team when it comes to champions league right so i wonder if that might be a slim advantage for a team like liverpool because they can afford to play a second choice team in europe and a first choice team strictly for the league so i wonder if that has an effect yeah once the schedule gets tight games every two weeks and stuff things will get interesting yeah. but let's talk about this week man so it's quite amusing that neither of us are on free hit on this podcast that is a free hit special we had pras who put out a video earlier so you guys can get his views on his free hit draft i can imagine it would have changed a little bit after the game last night i was planning only to watch the first half but i could sense that something was going to happen last night after luton went 3 up because yeah. there's a team that you don't know what to do almost right like when you're 3 in a lap i was wondering how they're going to come out in the second half are they going to sit back try to defend and hold the lead because you know they're not going to go as hard as they did in the first half Yeah. It, it was interesting to see you actually stay up at like 1:30 in the night and watch the games I when I woke up at like 5 o'clock for a piss. I was like soft messages are still up so he ended up seeing the game. Quite surprising because you're an early riser, right? Generally. Yep, yep. I still woke up at 6:30 and I got only 2 hours of sleep. My alarm clock at this my dog goes off at 6:30 anyway. There's no snooze button. So I was up. But I think it'll be interesting that both of us aren't on free hit so we can sort of give like an objective neutral view to what we think about the games etc and you know what people sh- sh- on free hit should be doing we'll obviously talk about transfers at the end when we're discussing our teams uh, it's based on strategy but yeah let's right, let's get into it sponsor let's, plugs first let's do it right as usual all the stats as well as tables and charts that you see on our podcast are from the fantasy football scout members area uh, we've constantly said that you know it's one of the best places to find a lot of information in a small amount of time you know because not everybody gets time to watch highlights etc not everybody gets time to watch games or match of the day even so if you want a quick brief of what's happening a fantasy football scout is the place to be if you want to become a member do click on the link in the description below because we are affiliates and it helps us out as well and as you know the fpl wire has partnered with nord vpn we've already mentioned in the past the privacy features threat protections access to global content libraries you guys know about this now this is the last week of their offer which runs through the 20th of march where you get a discount on 2 years membership plus 4 extra months and some gifts now what are these gifts for the usa uk australia and canada Users in these countries who purchase any of the 2 year plans will receive Uber Eats vouchers for 10, 20 or 30 dollars depending on the package you select. For other countries, the deal includes 4 extra months on the 2 year plan plus a 3 month coupon to share. Sign up today. Who? Let's get into it and right at the top guys, please like and subscribe. It helps us a lot. You helped us get to almost 1500 likes the last pod and this way LR doesn't have to mention the likes ratio. later on so we would appreciate you getting that in early 
lovely lovely so i think what we're going to do is uh, just give our thoughts game wise you know i think everybody is aware of the numbers and stats when it primarily comes to these four games but how do we actually see play the games playing out what we might think might be traps some of the picks that might be overlooked in our opinion and then once we discuss the four games i think let's just build a draft together and we'll see where we go and i think let's not go stats heavy right at the top trust went a lot into it you guys can have a look at those tables and we will refer them a little bit right at the end but probably if you yeah. want more detailed discussion team by team player by player that video is the one you should look for we are going to give more of our vibes feel which players are picks and there yeah. are a lot of things i think where you can differentiate because right at the top right from what i am seeing the free hit squads and the picks i'm seeing on twitter at least 8 to 9 seem to be quite common but i think there is room to differentiate in some of yeah. these i agree with you and you know one thing i just want our listeners and viewers to know is that when you are trying to predict one game and we're talking about 22 players on the pitch the outcome is extremely random So don't be really scared to take a punt or two that if you're feeling you feel like you know this wing back is weak and I feel like this player is going to be able to take advantage of him. Back your instinct, because predictability over a four game, a four over four games where you're backing just eleven players is random. So you know don't get too upset. I I think it's also worth saying that you need to sort of amend your expectations. You know where you go heavy on the favorites and they don't work out because it's one game. Anything ran, random can happen. in one game so just keep that in mind we should mention that we are also recording prior to the european games on thursday night there's also going to be some ramifications in the likes of west ham villa etc they go into extra time penalties etc those those assets accordingly you would change your expectations so caveat that right at the top right cool so first up burnley brentford what are your thoughts on this game now this game has the best clean sheet odds on paper and burnley Very difficult, I think, to read again. I always back them to score. Even I remember the game against Bournemouth; they should have scored two or three game, two or three goals there. Do you think Brentford now play a back four here or back five? I won't be surprised to see them playing a back four in this game. Me neither. The only caveat is Burnley do like to hog the ball. Burnley they do like to, and they've been better when it comes to attack off late. You know, uh, where they're getting a higher percentage of possession. Your boy Fofana. is quite a threat uh, when attacking as well i wonder if uh, thomas frank is a smart guy he's aware of that and sticks with fire at the back just for this one as well i don't think they need to go horses for courses all out attack in this game i think sitting with five at the back and on the counter suits them when playing an opposition like burnley i think that might be different if they are playing a sheffield united compared to a burnley hmm. that's an interesting thought because why i asked that it affects i think multiple things it affects region's prospects And Tony's yeah. prospects, and I just wanted to just quickly run through some numbers over here because I think Wissa is an interesting option that's gone yep. under the radar a little bit, not so much in our Discord. I know Eno has yeah. been all over him, but let's just go some numbers over here. Now this is the last two games. Tony's XG zero point zero one, one shot on target from outside the box. And then go to the previous one again. Also, yep. just look at the touch map. Like compare the center forward work that Tony's been doing to Vissa, who we are going to show later as well. Shout out to Baker for sharing this on our chat, and uh, I thought it'd be a good thing to share on the pod as well. So you see those yellow marks on the right hand side, so on the left hand side, uh, he's not doing as much center forward work as what you'd see Vissa doing later. Similar trend over here as well. We see a lot of touches in the wide areas. Rather than the box again, an XG of just point oh nine, XA is slightly higher, point one five. But do you think it's a little bit of like you know initially it already came out with just the adrenaline thing carrying him forward, or have you noticed anything different in the role he's playing? I also think you take into consideration the nature of the opponent. So these two charts are from games against Chelsea and Arsenal. Now, if Thomas Frank wants to get something out of the, out of his team, you know Tony from outside of him being a class finisher. is just a really good hold up guy a really he's a really smart passer of the ball pragmatic guy so he his responsibility in the team is a lot more when he's playing tougher opposition i reckon he'll be at the end of more things when he's playing a team like burnley compared to chelsea and arsenal you have to give the teams that respect in terms of quality of opponent true that now yeah. this this up again xg number 0.4 this is against chelsea where he scored And look at the look at the yellow patches. Much brighter, bigger patches compared to Ivan Tony. He's and generally whenever Tony and Vissa play together, 
Vissa is the guy who's in the center of the box a lot more than Ivan Toni is. Correct. It's a bit different for Maupe. From Vissa, I think much yeah. more of a penalty box for sure. For sure. I think this actually might be yeah. the Chelsea game instead. I think I might have mixed the two up. But yeah, five shots over here for Vissa. Yep. So my thinking is, right, uh, I think given the opposition that you're playing in terms of Burnley, I think this is the fixture to attack. I think a lot of people are on double Brentford defense. I probably wouldn't be doing that. That's I feel like, I, 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 because I'm expecting Burnley to score. I genuinely think Burnley are good for a goal. And, you know, yes, they have the best clean sheet odds here. But their clean sheet percentage is 29% compared to 20 to 29%. That's the range for everybody except Fulham here. So it, it's not like it's a big range. You're not really, you're comparing 0.1 to 0.11. I think a little bit of semantics and your reading of the game and attacking potential for the defenders comes into play. Huh? I just think Vissa is underrated because if you're asking me in terms of a good attack versus a weak defense, Brentford sort of jumps out to me. And I feel like Vissa is a good differential to go for in this game. And I wouldn't forego Tony because I think when you're trying to play four games, getting good penalty takers in your team, getting people who are on direct free kicks, it's the small margins that sort of add up, which increase your odds scoring points, right? So I wouldn't let go of Ivan Tony on my free hit, but I would throw Vissa in there because I feel like there's a brace potential. In there, for, and if I had, and literally out of the four games that I had to uh, shout out, one player that I would shout that I think you should definitely try sneaking in there is Vissa because he plays Burnley. He's not template, and I think there's potential for a double digit haul here. I like that, but could you make an argument that Reguon treat him as an attacker? He's been shooting a lot. His shot numbers are similar to Tony in that sense. Yeah. So get Reguon, screw Flecken. Everybody's going for Flecken. Let him go. I, I don't think it's that big a deal. We'll find another keeper. I have my thoughts in terms of who I'd go for. Let other me picks ask you right now, who, who is it? Who are you trying to go for? Martinez. Interesting. I was thinking of ignoring yeah. the Villa defense altogether. They've been quite poor of late. Yeah, but not like Brentford have been any good either, right? No. We're talking about a team in the last six, seven, eight weeks of sitting probably bottom five for XGC. Yep. It's, so it's, a, Villa, it's not like both of them. Yeah, both of them. Listen. If anybody can confidently point out out of the eight teams that this is a nailed on clean sheet, they're talking out of their ass. There is genuinely no nailed on clean sheet. You're, there's no standout clean sheet fixture. Mm. On paper, Brentford might look like the likeliest, but I feel like there's more potential for goals than a clean sheet. And so I would go regs. If you want to go Flecken, go Flecken also because Burnley do tend to, you know, Burnley do tend to have a gameplay where they take a lot of low quality shots. So somebody like a Flecken could accumulate the saves. Uh, so take your pick between Flecken and Rex. I would go Rex. In the last in the yeah. six starts he's had, he's had seven shots and six chances created. Those numbers are really good. Yeah. But I wouldn't let go of Visa. Yes, Reg is actually the one I fear as a non-free hitter because you just think that 15-pointer could happen. And he's been very unlucky not to find the back of the net so far. Most of his assists from, have been from shots which the rebounds have been yeah. scored, right? And I've got the numbers up over here. Now, this is for the season. I wouldn't read too yeah. much into this because I think in the recently what we've seen, Brentford have lost a lot of their first-choice centre-backs. Your Pinnock and me are missing. And Villa also, they've yeah. been sort of destabilised now. They don't have McGinn. They don't have Kamara. So, I don't know how yeah. much we can read into these season numbers at all. And they have Thursday football. And Both Thursday Villa football. have West Ham. Yeah. So, yeah. Let's, let's stick to Brentford only. If you're going with triple... Would you go triple Brentford? I think so, because again, like what I'm trying to do if I was building a free hit, I'd try to like get as few cross plays as possible. That is where your attackers play or defenders, and ultimately I'm not getting any Burnley assets. So naturally, yeah. I would like to go heavier on Brentford. Yeah. And, you know, one other thing worth citing out while we're just discussing the final margins is Burnley are terrible at set pieces also. So you do like Regulon who's on corners. You do like Tony and Visa. You know, Tony generally doesn't isn't responsible for the guy uh, to put the ball at the back of the net on set plays. He's the guy they give it to first and he plays a sort of uh, pass back through a header into the box for one of the defenders to or or midfielders to score. So I wouldn't be surprised to see like a headed Tony assist in a game like this also. I do think he's good though. I don't think you should go without a lot of people think of going without Tony as well. No, Not for me. I wouldn't. Too much class. Too much class. And you can't read too much into the last three, four, five games. Small sample size, man. 
really small sample size. Even though he's looked a little off the pace, even though Vissa tends to do the most centre forward work, we're talking about Ivan Tony. Let's just give a fleeting mention to Burnley. For Fana, zero interest? Not zero interest. If I was to punt on somebody from Burnley, it'd be Dimitri for Fana. Because he knows the back of the net. Fana, but yeah, yeah, same thing. Yeah. Let's call him Dimitri, just like that. Just just, <laughs> just, just, give him a pod name. He, he's got a good shot on him. He's scored a few in the last four or five games. And Burnley, I wouldn't be surprised if Burnley gets more possession than Brentford. So, uh, so probably will. I can see Brentford a game like it. Yeah, yeah, probably will. So Fofana could get three, four, five shots if you have on a good day. A couple of them go inside. I'm not against the punt, but nobody else from Burnley. Yeah. Move on to the next one. Yep. I think this is a big, big game now. The Luton would have gone above Forest if they won last night, and I think they're going to be very demoralized. It's the first time in 21 years. That a team has no. from 3 0 up at halftime has gone on to lose the game. And second half, they offered absolutely nothing. Well, there were a few chances. But like, you know, Barkley yeah. should have scored. Morris had a good save of Neto. But in general, you could see that the team mentally was shrinking. And the Japanese centre back, he had a tough time. They yeah. have so many defensive injuries. You have a short turnaround also now from Wednesday, Saturday. I think you've got to go heavy on the Forest attackers. Or Luton attackers. How, like, if it's, it's, there's also like the psychology, right? If you're down in the bun, dumps and it's a big game where it's basically your direct relegation rival. Like if you're going to pick yourself up for a game, it's going to be this game. So, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if they galvanize the troops for an opposition like Forrest. You can't cite how important this game is for them. That it's it, it's basically like an Arsenal uh, city of the relegation race. Because actually these two time, teams are pretty high in terms of threat for relegation. Luton need to get three points here. So they will go, be going all out attack. I, Morris is a good shout. Defenders, I don't know. But I have no issues going with a Luton attacker in this game. But I, I mean, just you, don't know. You treat Doughty have... as an attacker, right? Because ultimately you need to put three defenders and you treat Doughty as an attacker. You treat Doughty as an attacker, but you just don't accept, expect a clean sheet. No, but then like, again, somebody in our comments on Trust's video posted that Forrest are in general quite weak at defending set pieces and aerially. Yeah. So he said in particular, yeah. don't go without Morris and Doughty because he expects them to concede a lot of yeah. aerial chances. Most number of goals conceded from set pieces this season, 18 Forrest. There you go. Their underlying num data on set piece XGC is not that bad, but they've conceded a lot. No. And the, the keeper, if you notice the last game also, he was a little poor in when it comes to collecting the crosses, etc. Yeah. Uh, even the goal that went off a defender is not commanding the area, etc. So no. yeah, you don't mind Doughty and Morris for that. Yeah, None of the three keepers are really impressed right now. They have apparently three good keepers, but none of them really has nailed down the spot this season. But let's talk about Luton first. Which Luton players do you go for? I think you like Doughty and Morris. Yeah. Is Morris a full lock to you? You would go Morris over, let's say, Abyssa? I prefer a uh, Vissa. Actually, the, the penalty is count, man. Like, that's one thing I've learned this season. Like, throw the penalty takers in there. Because you have to keep in mind, right? The third, like, you're talking Tony. We discussed a lock. I don't think Watkins you're going to zag. Because, you know, West Ham's yeah. defensive data, is not, they're not a good defense. So, ultimately, the third striker spot is going to come down between the, to the likes of, let's say, your Muniz, Morris. Now, the Forest, we don't know if Taiwo, Wood, Origi, who's going to start up top. So, you can't really go there. You could get leaks though. Could get if leaks. You get a first leak, kickoff. If you get a leak, yeah. If you get a leak that somebody like a Wood or Taiwo starts, take a punt there. Mm-hmm. Pras was yeah. preparing for this week by a 69 score. Yeah. Wood's fit and Pras got a 69. Some things never change, man. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Tough question, man. Uh, well, what do you think? You you would go Morris over Vissa, right? I would. Again, because talisman, right? Because you look at the last like the, the, what happened, the weird thing, the last double. Six goals scored by Bournemouth, 50% goal involvement, Solanke, one goal. Four goals yeah. scored by Luton, Morris, 56% goal involvement, zero involvement. So you expect the data to somehow catch up, right? You know what? I won't sit on the fence. I'll go Vissa. I've just got an instinct about Vissa. Um, shout out to Eno as well. I feel the same way. Because what also encourages me is not everybody's looking at Vissa. Genuinely, not everybody's looking at Vissa. So, how do you make up 10 points on everybody else who's on free hit? I think Vissa is the one who's got that high upside. Good shout. So, I think Luton yeah. apparently, the only other investable asset is Barkley. But I think the midfield spots are at a, are at a premium. 
you're probably not going yeah. there but i think the forest now the wingers are interesting both elanga and hudson adoy neither of them started against brighton yeah. and i think that was a mistake that no made he probably realized that this is a much more winnable game and luton struggled against semenyo they could not defend yeah. against space at all i think i like elanga as a punt yeah just know that he has a little bit of a darwin tendency where he gets a ton of chances he gets a big chance again i mentioned it three four times in the pod it's just about whether he puts them at the back of the net or not he's he's a little uh, uh, he's he's not very incisive as a finisher but he will get chances especially if luton play three at the back and that leaves space behind would you go there or would you go gibbs white or possibly even go both with you like with one less forward i'd go elanga cuz i feel like actually it's the mistake i have made this season it's tough again between gibbs white gibbs white and gibbs white is like your dull not... art pick where i think elanga is obviously a much more darwinesque more maverick high ceiling pick right now what gibbs white has is he takes set pieces but we don't know if he necessarily takes penalties now let's say if wood is starting the penalty duties might shift over there and again i think just the space that these guys leave luton behind i think i really like the elanga shout over gibbs white it's the first time you're going uh... Sexy I've taken four dinner. hits in a row, row man. Yeah, really, the yeah, pods yeah. was taken now. Ha, huh. tough man. I could, I can't put my thumb on which way I'd go because, like, one thing I want to do when I'm trying to improve as an FPL player is take finishing ability of a player into consideration as well. Because I get sucked into people that get a lot of chances but are not not able to finish their dinner, right? So keeping that and penalties in mind, I'm going to say this way. That's fair. That's yeah. right. That's interesting. We are on that side, but I don't really think you can't go wrong. But I do think that fourth or fifth midfield spot should be a yeah. forest attack. I think we, the draft I've built has Kudus in it, but I made that prior to the games yesterday. I really think Luton are there for the taking because they do not have a fit defense at the moment. You get at them, they will crumble. Don't like that as a double Luton defense owner. I mean, I have, Kab- I have Kabore <laughs> and Dote. Do not like it, but it is what it is. What so your that's... assist? Kabore assist, baby. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's some things you and Kabore and Baker have a little bit of a connection going this year. Yeah. yeah. So one last swing now. Yep, yep. Right. Want... Fulham versus Spurs. This is an interesting one. Now Fulham have gone under the radar. I read somewhere. I think somebody pointed out on a Discord if they don't play Broya this game, they're going to have to end up paying the four million. I think they'd rather pay it happily. If they wanted to, if they rated Broya, he would have started by now. And. How unfair would it be on Muniz to not start him after everything that he's been doing in the last five six weeks, right? Like he's really good. He he looks good on the eye test. Uh, in the last six weeks, out of all the forwards on display, he's got the most shots and shots in the box. Yeah, he's shooting yeah. like he's taking shots like Maguire in Greece, so all yeah. over the place. And and Fulham are going to get attacking chances, man. Like they lost to Wolves, but they had a ton of chances against Wolves as well. So you know, I wouldn't take that as a, yeah. So, if you want to punt on a Muniz, feel free to. You just don't have many open spots. So, think about where and how you want to go. It's the third spot. Vissa, Muniz, like you mentioned, Morris. You decide where you feel like going. I think the really spots where he can differentiate is probably third defender, fourth midfielder, third striker. You could... Be a little more risky. We'll talk about the West Ham yeah, Villa game I mean, a little. If later. you ask me, you can even take Watkins on in a one-week yeah. thing. If let's say now Villa goes to one twenty minutes, you could zag that. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So it's your risk appetite, man. And also, like somebody, this this is where strategy and current position of rank and your rank goals comes into play. Also, right? Like if you're somebody who's forty, fifty points behind your rank goals. You could take an extra risk or two. If you're somebody who's leading your mini leagues and wants to hold position or you're comfortable with your rank, you go more template. That sort of strategy now comes into play towards the last eight, nine game weeks of the season. But uh, any midfielder pick, I just want to shout out Harry Wilson. I think he's got a little bit of an upside. Uh, he's... I remember when uh, Luke came on our pod talking about the promoted teams a couple of seasons ago. He was like, Harry Wilson was the most Salah of the uh, promoted, uh, the promotion league uh, fantasy game. And he did really well. So, you know, they don't have that because 
then the midfielders that are playing behind Muniz, they're all interesting names, but none of them are starting first choice. They tend to get substituted. Willian was probably the one, but Harry Wilson could be a shot. I just think there are much better attackers elsewhere. Let's, I let's think Iwobi talk. is heads and head and shoulders over Wilson. Just the numbers, he's been posting shots and creativity. I think from the Fulham mid, he's the one to get. Yeah. I suppose will concede chances. Like Definitely. they've kept just some numbers again rattling the No, Van der Ven is a big thing also, right? We should mention that. Because he makes really, he's so key to that defense. His pace is unreal. Yeah. And Paulinia is fit. It's, it's, I don't benched, think he's though. going. He's getting benched. I think that was just a little bit of a game. I think he starts the Spurs game. I just genuinely think he starts the Spurs game. But you know where everybody is thinking that this is three or four or five goals confirmed for Spurs are underrating what Fulham have been up to this season. Just wanted to add that. But let's talk uh, Spurs attackers, defenders. I mean, Son is a lock. Son's probably the I captain. Mean, captain shout. Yeah. Best captaincy option just because of the sheer finishing ability that the guy has. But uh, let's talk other Spurs picks. And Madison first. We have a couple of interesting quotes. Yep. But you just I'm not going to read it out, but just let to, to us know what Ant says over here. So the gist of... Ange and Madison, both in these quotes, is like Ange is telling everybody that, uh, you know, some of the players are improving and somebody like uh, Madison needs to be the furthest forward and he needs to play further up the field. And even Madison has been saying that he likes playing under Ange, he likes playing this attacking brand of football. He wants to get into the box a, little, a lot more and it's the best he's felt since his injury. He had a 0.75 XGI in the last game as well. So things are looking good. He spends a lot of time in the center of the box. And I just, I was, te I was telling, uh, I was talking on the pod last week or the last last week, where he's a little bit of a sleeper pick. And, you know, last week, that goal, I wasn't too surprised to see that goal on set pieces as well. Poro didn't take any of the corners. It was Madison who took them. So he's also got the routes to points. Spends time in the center of the box. I think it's a good pick. Very good pick. I think he, like, yeah. he would probably be in midfield. My second preference, if we were to rank the midfielders for this week, I think Sun first, Madison second. Yeah, but just for people that want to take template on, outside of Son, you can take anybody on, in my opinion, in midfield. I think second, third, fourth, I don't think there's like a standout pick. Even Bowen, I don't think he's stand up. No, no. Bowen, like not, if you not have... at all. I don't think. I think Madison yeah. is head and shoulders over Bowen because, as a Bowen owner for the last two weeks, I've been quite disappointed by in terms of yeah. the volume and just watching him on the eye test because he's doing a lot of good work and he's creating space for others yeah. and he's not necessarily getting the short volume himself. And what's interesting, the last game is both Antonio and Inks came on. So we have yeah. to see what happens now in the Europa League. If Inks comes on, it's a very different profile of striker from, let's say, Antonio. For, you know, let's say if Antonio starts, I like Bowen a lot more. But if Ings does, not so much. Right. And uh, sticking to the Fulham Spurs game, you would have Madison in your draft. I would have. Too. Absolutely. He's probably going to be my transfer in. Uh, third pick, I wouldn't mind going with three attackers in this team or letting the third pick slide. Because again, I won't be surprised if Fulham score. It's not a nailed on right, clean sheet. But you have to get the attackers with upside, right? Ultimately, now the what we saw the last game, now Spurs have actually changed things a little bit defensively. At least it was the case against Villa. Paulo didn't get forward at all. It was exactly. all Udogi who was given the license to charge. Yeah, so that's what. If you're on free hit, I would actually go Udogi over Poro. Poro is the better player, more quality, but Udogi is spending more time in the box. That said, okay, let's just talk bigger picture here. I think I, I would chance on the Villa guys getting a clean sheet more because I feel like they're more attacking as well. The problem is it's a Sunday game and you're not going to get leaks. But if we knew that... Actually, you could, if you Dean could be Moran... guesstimate, right? From if somebody starting on Thursday, it's unlikely they're start not going to play on Sunday. But it's a risk either way. Yeah. I just think they're more attacking. And I think I fancy a clean sheet against West Ham who also play on Thursday more than I fancy a clean sheet against Fulham. That's interesting. Like... Fulham are underrated and Spurs are leaky, man. Spurs don't keep clean sheets generally. And Van Deven is missing. So, you know, it's 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 all good and well and good and it looks good on paper. But I had chance with Villa more. I think you pick a team that you like for the clean sheets more and back them with a double up. Your three Spurs then? If you're going to go three Spurs. Son, Madison. BJ? And then if... BJ or... Uh, 
Udogi, one of the two, whichever way you want to go, because you have to judge whether you think Udogi is good, attacking enough. I think he's attacking enough. Poro's got quality, but I would probably swerve. I think there are like attackers I like elsewhere. Hmm. Yeah, I probably won't yeah. get a third attack, but I think Johnson is quite clear in terms of I think he's going to start and a good yeah. differential, good upside. Yeah, yeah, and. You know, it's about the creativity that comes in from uh, Kulusevsky's side as well, right? Benen Johnson, wherever, whichever side he's playing, tends to be at the back post waiting for a goal. So I don't mind that as a shout. He's a genuine goal scorer in that team. Correct. Yeah. Move on to the next one. Yep. West Ham, Villa. I don't think this any is, of us are lacking on Douglas Lewis anymore. Yeah, man. They've, it's a big point to mention that... Uh, McGinn is red carded. He's going to miss the next three games. That means that Villa don't really have anybody else to play as the most defensive-minded midfielder. So, Lewis's penalties and set plays and not much else. Q2 open goals again going to happen. That's just what Douglas Lewis does. He's inevitable. I mean, but, they, they uh, have to shout out the Zabardi thing from Pras. Pras did that yeah. yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he mentioned on the last pod, you know, that there's no way that Zabani is going to score. We mentioned also that his underlying numbers are actually better than uh, Senesi's in the last six weeks. And then Pras was like, no, there's no chance I'm going to say it. But see, Pras is what happens. The law is the law. So, Dagi Lewis, if you're a believer in the law. Uh, but West Ham Villa, man, I don't even know what West Ham are. What was that game? What was the last 20, 30 minutes between Burnley and West Ham where both teams could have scored a ton of West chances? West Ham didn't come man. to play in the first half, right? This was a bit yeah. of worry with West Ham and the European hangover, especially if it's away. The next game, yeah. they always suffer a little bit. First 45 minutes, they didn't turn up. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Villa will be wounded Tigers, yeah? I think. Like, having lost the last game, but... West Ham like to play against teams like Villa who keep a high line. It suits them. They like playing against opposition who do exactly what Villa does. So there's going to be a lot of domination and ball possession from Villa and there's going to be a lot of counter-attack from West Ham and that's how the game is going to shape up. Back four again for Villa? Yeah, I think they go back to a back I think four. he made there's a no massive mistake. To... He over-tinkered yeah. last game. Yeah. But then who does he play in midfield? I don't even know. Dendonka? Is, is he Dendonka still at, is uh, not there at uh, Villa anymore. They loaned or sold him out. They play that Erojine bomb. I don't even know how you say okay. his name. Probably, no, Telemans. It'll probably be like, oh, yeah. you know, 4-2-3-1 with Telemans and uh, this one, Douglas in midfield. Yeah. Fair. Fair. I'd still go Watkins. I just think he's... Him and Son are the best players on display in this game week in the league. So just by sheer quality and class, you take them on. Yeah. I don't uh, think it's worth swerving. I think there's literally like, because you could single-handedly ruin your free hit. And it's something I found out this week, right? A single player can be a difference between a green and a red arrow. If like the Palmer for me, I didn't own him. It was a 22K red arrow. Otherwise, I'd have been on, let's say, if I did own him, something like a 10K green arrow. Just one yeah. player like that uh, can be decisive. The reason I fell from 200K about six weeks ago to 600K was because of Watkins and Saka. Saka. They're the, the quality of players that are capable of 15 plus points. And if that happens two weeks in a row, you're destroyed. So, you know, learn my lesson when it comes to really high class, high class players, you know. So don't take Watkins on, maybe. Don't. I think we changed that up. And I don't think mm -hmm. any of the Villa fullbacks also, because there's a small chance that Cash still plays on the wing, but it's not a risk worth taking, I think. Yeah. I just don't like West Ham, I don't think still have clicked enough in attack. That's why I feel like Villa is a good clean sheet, clean sheet to chance. That's all. So your picks. Yeah. Now let's talk about the West Ham mids a little bit. I think you have some numbers on Kudus. Yeah, just generally, Bowen has the better attacking threat when it comes to goal scoring and Kudus has the more uh, assist threat. If I'm picking a West Ham attacker, it has to be Bowen. I just think he's talismanic. I think uh, he's a great finisher. He's capable of braces in games. Uh, I wouldn't take on Bowen. I think the Aston Villa Highline suits somebody like Bowen. Uh, yeah, that's, those are my thoughts. Kudus would be a second attacker if I was to go there, but I wouldn't swore Bowen. I'd agree with that. I think that's pretty much it. I think from Villa, this you'd go Watkins. From West Ham, you'd go Bowen. You wouldn't really go defenders from either team. That way, you also avoid the cross play. I, I, like, the, I like the idea of uh, Aston Villa defenders. 
a cash or let's let's say somebody like a moreno gets 90 minutes or even 120 minutes in europe on thursday yeah, maybe I, only then like i would be very confident that one full back starts and i, I yeah, wouldn't go cash because he's just not attacking he's not on it i wouldn't go cash yeah, but probably look at the left side yeah it's the dean uh, moreno position i wouldn't mind a punt there and i don't mind martinez as a keeper as well good keeper capable of uh, getting a few saves as well so i i don't mind that as a pick right so we've covered the free hit picks now let's talk something leon good. bailey would you go there his under nine yeah. numbers are really good i'm pretty confident he's going to start against ajax so again yeah. it's not somewhere i would like to go there are better picks there in midfield is this west ham or a team capable of crumbling like the defense hasn't been good this season they've sort of been patchy for a bit even 17th 18th xcc just adiola makes world e saves exactly so there are team capable of crumbling so i wouldn't but at the same time you see not... them conceding more than two at home i don't know i don't see them but like you know let's talk about which teams have the potential of crumbling burnley has the potential of crumbling luton luton ten luton has the potential of crumbling even forest if luton really get at them not crumbling but to concede three Yeah, well, I don't have a read on Forest at all. I don't know what Nuno has been up to. It's very difficult because the can't... data is somewhat decent. We saw that a few weeks yeah. ago, but they still seem to be shipping goals. And Luton are at home. Yeah. Luton at home are just a different beast. And I think, especially after losing, like how they did, like it's the wounded tiger syndrome. I believe in it. I think Luton are good for two goals. Mm-hmm. Cool. Cool. Let's just uh... discuss those picks then for the non-free hitters. Who do you guys need to target? Because you also have to keep maybe your wild card horizon of thirty, thirty-one in mind. Sure. I mean, Spurs are top of the list. Because of Luton and thirty, Luton and thirty. Yeah, Luton and thirty, right? Like so, buying. I'm probably going to be doing De Bruyne to Madison. De Bruyne's injured, and... by the way. Did you read that quote? He apparently has no, a groin injury. He's oh, really? He's opted out of the international break. Belgium have said that he's nursing a groin injury and he's not fully fit. And this is so different. Now earlier he had a hamstring injury, so this is a different muscle now. I think there are three teams. If you're looking at a pool of players that have good picks in thirty thirty one, I wouldn't mind Fulham also because I remember they have a decent Sheffield, fixture. They have in Sheffield 30s. United in thirty. Exactly. Yeah. So I think there are two defenses that Fulham can take on. If you wanted to punt on a somebody like a Muniz or Iwobi or uh, Harry Wilson, there's Aston Villa who have Wolves at home. I reckon in thirty, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, they do. And there's Spurs. I think these are the three teams that you buy. And players Brentford from. have Manchester United. Yeah, not a bad defense to play against. You know, it's we're still conceding chances at, at the back. So, at Brentford, so that's a difficult fixture. You know, we famously lost four you, by you four or five goals. You were four nil at half time. Yeah, four nil at half time. So you know, you never know what happens in that game. So yeah, these are the four players, uh, teams that you target players from. If not uh, wild carding in game week thirty. And one thing as a general advice, also you know, you need to pay close attention to the FA Cup games as well. And Pras is probably going to be doing a video immediately after the FA Cup games, yeah. and one of us might or might not join him, where we'll have the landscape in front of us in terms of what 34 and 37 could potentially look like, which will determine chip strategy. Yeah, I think we'll be getting the fixture announcements close to game week 30, and we should mention that game week 31 is a midweek; it's a Tuesday yeah. deadline. Yeah. So unless you're wild carding, there's no reason for you to make any early transfers at all after this game week deadline. Let's discuss the free hit draft. Yeah, sure. Is that bus teams? Yes, there you go. So I'll just read this out for the audio guys. I'm sure you guys would have seen this all over Twitter and most websites. It's got Flecken and Region double up in defense. Doughty and Poro. In midfield. okay. So now this is this is the defense draft. What would you do? Let's just do that as an activity. I mean, my, my, I mean, I made the draft, so I would probably just change over here, Kudus for a, let's say, an Elanga or a Gibbs, right? No. Let's talk defense. You would make the Poro to Udogi switch? No, I love Poro. I'm loyal to Poro. You love Poro. All right. I'd probably uh, change Flecken to uh, Martinez and Poro to Dean slash Moreno. Hmm. And back my gut of. Backing the Villa clean sheet. So Reguilon and Doughty are the locks. Reguilon and Doughty are the locks. The keepers and the third defender is where you can afford to change. I'd agree with that. Yeah, yeah. You can afford to zigzag that, but I think the for those two wing backs would probably the both the left wing backs. I think are simple picks. They take set pieces, take a lot of shots. They don't keep clean sheets. Good goal potential. Yeah. 
Now in midfield, I've gone here for Madison, Sun, double West Ham mids of Bowen and Kudus. And I think the locks over here for me would be the first three. The Kudus spot could be your forest mid. Yeah, same. Locks for, locks for me would be Madison, Sun, Bowen. I wouldn't switch any of the three of them. I like Bowen, especially like you mentioned, against the high line, right? He's not as effective yeah. against a deep block like the Everton game we saw was a little bit difficult for him. But yeah. against this sort of game where you get some space on the counter, he could be good. Just a mistake, I forgot to mention West Ham also. West Ham are decent picks this week as well because they play Newcastle at home next week, which is also a kind of opposition West Ham like to face. So you could buy a Bowen very happily for two weeks also, in my opinion. To that. Yeah. Move on to the forwards. Who who would your fourth midfielder be? Come on, put your uh, uh, money where your mouth is. Where would you go? From all Forest fans I've spoken to, Forest forums I've read, they all think Ilanga will start. That's where I'd go. Interesting. Ilanga, or let's where say I put I... Gibbs White over here as a first sub. You could go either one. Again, it depends on the risk appetite. It's a one game, anything can happen. For security of starts, 180, sorry, 90 minutes. Gibbs White is your man because even if Ilanga starts, 70 75 minutes sub offs are possible. I would punt on Harry Wilson just because it's the swivable spot. Just have a bit of fun. That's where I'd go. I'd be, I will be over, over Wilson if going yeah. to the full bit. And, and uh, up top, up top, Tony Watkins locks. Tony Watkins locks. No, I wouldn't Watkins, mind if right? somebody wanted to take Ivan Tony on though. I don't so think you'd rather take on Tony I, than Watkins. Yeah, quality of player, quality of attack of the team. That's true. I That's reckon. fair enough. And what about Morris? Yeah, I would go Visa. I, I would not compromise on Visa. He's my gut feel. So more okay, cool. So I think the third striker spot is probably where you can debate a little yeah. bit, and I don't mind the Visa shout at all. Yeah. And the bench is cool. really just yeah. put like it's pretty much picks itself right now for this for the audio guys. We've put in Leno, Gibbs White, Sufal, and Konsa. But you can just pretty much pick any guys. Now, Konsa is the most likely Villa centre back to start. Sufal again is a little bit dodgy again. If West Ham play a lot of minutes on Thursday, but you should get like a, like a definitely a good attacker for your eight, yeah. for your eighth one. And note if one team is playing ninety and one team is playing one twenty, that would affect my perception of how I see the game on Sunday going. Correct. Yeah. So you have to always caveat that. Anything cool. else? Let's go into our teams. Yep, not much today to discuss. Otherwise, your team up first. Yeah. Uh, it looks like a team that needs a free hit, but uh, I'm prioritizing fun this season. And I don't see much fun in a free hit 29. And I want to just use a free hit in either 34 or 37 when there are higher ceiling picks on display. So I'm not going to uh, free hit. If I was under 100K, I would probably consider considering free hit, but I'm sitting at 550K. So I'm prioritizing Fun, 30 onwards. Uh, my team's Kaminsky, Taylor, Van Der Veen, Doty, Son, Morris, and Watkins. I'm looking at doing De Bruyne to Madison and probably looking at doing Foden to Bowen. So you have no City bids or City attackers for the game against Arsenal? That's the chance I'm taking. So it's, it's a chance between Saka and Foden. And uh, I've been burned by Saka too much. So that's the debate at hand here. Would you sell Solanke instead for a Vista Tony? I was having a look at Solanke's fixtures right after the break. They're really good. It's one week for me. I'm very it's likely. One week, to, right? you, you, yeah. Mm, Tony is again. Tony could go big man because the Burnley fixture, like we talked about, the two teams most likely to crumble are Burnley and Luton. Yeah. So I think you target the attackers against those guys. I think I would get Tony. And let go of Jared Bowen. Yeah, I would let go of Bowen. Bowen, again, I'm not that convinced as an owner. I'm very, like, not say pissed off. It's interesting off, because you won't. Oh, yeah, you've owned Bowen for two weeks. So you do have that tunnel vision in terms of having, watching him when you're yeah. owning that player as well. So He could have got Just some assists the last game, but the goal threat was very negligible. Fair. Fair. Cool. What are your team? I'm little so I just want to go back to your team. So you have, I'm just counting now. Let's just go really quick. One, two, three. Six. Uh, I'm, I'm not counting Van Der Ven because he's injured. Yeah. That's three, four, five, six players, and one of them is Taylor. Yeah. So five and a half, we can call it. And you plan to add no, two more. Charlie Taylor is going to get an assist. <laughs> He's going to assist Dimitra, Dimitri Fofana's header. It's nailed on. Fair enough. Okay. So you'll be basically yeah. rolling with, like, let's say, eight players. 
eight players. If I feel like an extra hit, uh, I might get in regs if Van der Ven is definitely ruled out. So somebody who's in your position, let's say if they do have six or seven players, would you advise them taking a free hit or like get like you know, a yes. couple of attackers in? I would advise taking a free hit. I'm not doing it because I don't care about rank at the moment and I want to chase high ceiling, but it's not a bad play. The, the smarter thing to do is to chase the free hit. I just don't have fun picking players like Bowen, etc. on free hit, which is why I'm not doing it. Fair enough. Yeah. My team, I've got Ariola in goal, Kabore, Doughty, Poro, Cash in defense. I've already made one free transfer. I've done Wang to Madison, Sun Captain, Bowen, Solanke, Watkins, and Morris in there right now with Dubravka, Gabriel, Ford, and Saka on the bench. So the guys on the bench are pretty clear I won't be selling. I do want to keep them. There's a bit of value built in and I think that game week 30 fixture, even though we think it could be KG, game state could yeah. have that game be high scoring as well. Yep. So Solanke to Tony will be the transfer for a hit that should give me 11 on paper, but maybe like it ends up being 9 or 10 with injuries, etc. Whatever. Yeah. I think Morris is an interesting differential for both of us because not many people I'm expecting to go there on the free hit. You know, some people could swerve that position. So I think him coming in clutch is quite important for us. Yeah, very close. And the Luton defense. As well. the, yeah. if, if, if Luton somehow keep a clean sheet, <laughs> we're in the money. Nah, I'm not expecting that. If they get another assist each, that'll be well yeah. enough. Yeah, fair, fair. Do you want to do a short Q&A or do you have to head out? Uh, we'll, we'll do five, ten minutes of a Q&A. Cool. Let's get your questions in, guys. Pretty, we're pretty much in IB mode. So, yeah. keep it light today. While we're waiting, you know I have an auction on uh, Sunday. If you were going to go all out in terms of bidding, which player would you go out for? Rachindra, man. You to I told you, Rachindra is my <laughs> boy. He's going to be the star of this IPL. Note this shit down. Yeah. All right. Noted. Zoff is feeling good about Rachindra. All right. Um... Habina suggested sell whoever you have less money invested in out of Saka and Foden. That's right. Uh, yeah. I think most of us will have more money invested in Saka naturally. I know you bought him a bit late. But because Foden uh, hasn't really risen that much. Somebody suggested Konsa is starting for sure because he can't play against Ajax. Exactly. Yeah. And he would start for sure regardless. Uh, yeah. Tony as captain, somebody is asking. Let's talk a little bit of captaincy. If you were to presume that uh, Fulham might be a difficult thing, who who would be your second and third choice as captaincy? It's an interesting question. I, again, the Forest one, you wouldn't really like to go there because there's too much uncertainty. Watkins, potentially. But again, you're not really... This is for me. He's got that upside. <laughs> yeah, man. I, I've, I've got a feeling about this, I'm telling you. Who do you so, go? Watkins, then there's, there's, there's Tony that people are thinking of as I think captain. probably Who do you Tony, go there? Because, yeah, I like the penalties, 90 plus minutes, etc. Probably Tony then. Tony would be third. I think Mor Son, Watkins, Tony. Morris? Captain C-Shot? Nah. Huh? Too burnt from last night. Yeah. Uh, Ashik uh, is asking if Muniz is good to start both good, good gate 29 and 30. I think, yeah. We think so. I think... Yeah, I don't Too think Jimenez will take bank. his spot anytime soon. And it's apparently yeah, Tony's birthday on Saturday. The chat's letting us know. Ooh, interesting. <laughs> Man, uh, I think Ashik is thinking of wildcarding in 31. So he's targeting the Sheffield United fixture yeah. in 30. So I think he'd probably Muniz go now. Muniz over somebody like uh, Tony. Yeah, don't shot. mind that as a shot. Yeah, fair shot. Um... Uh, Shivam is asking uh, Harlan to Vissa for minus over. What do you reckon? I think you're the Vissa fanboy. Yeah, do it, man. If you're wild carding in 30 31, then do it. Otherwise, don't. Somebody's asking uh, if Bumo is back. Will he eat into Vissa's minutes? I don't think Bumo is back this week, but he might do it. But he's, he's likely to be back in 30. Hmm. Correct. Oh. Okay, yeah. Good job, you already muted, Mr. Yes. Troll. Somebody's asking about Werner on free hit. If you get a leak, I don't uh, think he's likely to start. I don't think AB will get a leak because the game's later. I think it's pretty good, but it's going to be BJ Kulu. Werner as a yeah. back sub. 
he has somebody has nine players with a minus nine. How do you get minus nine? Probably a typo. It's probably negative eight. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. He's corrected. He says negative four. Then, yeah, nine then you don't feel it, bro. As long as you get most of your attackers, I'm guessing he'll have few defenders, but at least five or six good attackers. Stick with that. I think nine is Stick fine. Stick with that. I agree. What are the other opportunities for free to alternate? I think it's very difficult to say right now. Somebody, Matty Winnerlot is asking that. We can't really say whether 34 or 37 is what's going to be better without knowing. But one of the two. One of the two. And you'll know. And you'll probably know before 30 which one. Saurabhdeep is asking like, is keep Richarlison if we get better news tomorrow. I think Richarlison, even if fit, he's going to be on the bench. Very hard to see him starting. Yeah. And there's no guarantee he starts in 30 either. So yeah, Son could just continue playing. Correct. I don't think the Brazil squad has been announced yet. I don't know if he's going or not. Yep. Cool. Uh, wrap we'll wrap it up now, Zof. Yep, right. yep. Let's do it. Any parting uh, words? Make sure you like and subscribe and uh, have a good international break and uh, enjoy the IPL. All right. We'll see you guys next week. We'll have to do a short video either with some of us or just press, just discussing the fallout of the FA Cup games. Till then, enjoy yourself. Have a good break. And Daylight Savings will be back by the time Premier League resumes. So one hour less. Oh, are you serious? Sit. That's yes. great. That's Can't lovely. Wait for That's that. lovely. That should be yeah. great. Nice. All right, man. Good to see you again. Talk soon. Likewise. Bye. Cheers. Cheers. Bye.